All right, welcome back, my friends, to another Luminous Mysteries. This is March 29th, 2022, and my name's Tom. So we got our first reading in Ezekiel 47, 1 through 9 and 12, and then John 5, 1 through 16. And it's been a long day. I don't even know what I wrote. So it's going to be a journey for both of us again. <laughs> so Ezekiel 47. The river from the temple. The man brought me back to an entrance to the temple. And I saw water coming from out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside of the outer gate facing east, and the water was trickling from the south gate. Or from the south side, sorry. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off 1,000 cubits. And then he led me through the water that was ankle deep. He measured off another 1,000 cubits and led me through the water that was knee deep. He measured off another 1,000 cubits and led me through the water that was waist deep. He measured off another thousand cubits. But now the river, wa uh, but now it was a river and I could not cross because the water had risen and it was deep enough to swim in. A river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When we arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region and goes into the, Are uh, into the Areba, uh, Ereba, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it en uh, empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creature will live wherever the river flows. There will be a large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So, where the river flows, everything will live. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. And we got John. <clears throat> the healing at the pool. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish fest festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called the Shiva and which is surrounded by five covered um, colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used, the, used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. He asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was the Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. 
But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick up your mat and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. Um, just on the surface, you know, the, the, the low-hanging fruit. Um, just in the conversation that the, the crippled man had with Jesus, he had it in his mind how he was going to be healed. It was going to be through this, this, this pool. He had all his faith in the pool. And then when Jesus healed him, he immediately said, Okay, you got the power. You know, you're the one. Sorry, I keep looking over here because that's where my OBS is coming up. Um, so he, he keeps saying he, he immediately recognizes Jesus and his divineness and his, and his, and his divine nature had healed him. And listen to him. He didn't care what day it was. He got healed. Um, so let's uh, let's jump into what um, came through my uh, my jazz hands when I <laughs> went to the computer today. Ezekiel was given a uh, a waking vision of what our Lord Jesus is and what He offers us. Jesus is the entrance to the temple of the Lord God. The door that faced, faces east towards the rising sun. And from the right side of the temple flows the living waters. Just so happens Jesus, you know, is at the right hand, at right, is seated at the right hand of God. And from Revelation, the living waters flow from his feet. Jesus is our, intercess, is our intercessor to the love that created us, God. He is the divine truth and the divine goodness that is put into action through his human body. He faces the east. His whole life was for the purpose of rising from the dead. This rising showed you and I the way to eternal life with him. By our dying to our human nature and rising with his divine nature. Remember when Jesus drove out that demon who said his name was Legion? That there were many demons within that person, and when they went out, they went to the pigs and drove them off a cliff. This is recorded for us in the Gospels to help us understand that we all, you and I, have many things within us that take control over our divine spiritual nature. In the Eastern religions, they call them egos. These things can be, <coughs> excuse me. These things can be appetites or and or desires of our body, like disordered eating, drinking, sex, or focusing on things that you want for yourself, and failing to see that your loved ones are waiting for you to see them, and to share your time with them. I myself struggle so often with many of these egos or demons or disordered passions. It's, it's all the same thing, no matter what name you put on it. All these egos or passions are what w would we would tell someone is who we are. Like when we make small talk, what do you do for a living? Or when we chat about the things that make us happy or command our attention. Video games, singing, dancing, making this thing or that. All these things seek to take over a part of us and make themselves into an ego or demon or disordered passion because they can and often do distract us from those who are really thirsty for our love. These demons are the ones we must focus on driving out of ourselves through the intercession of our Lord. The more we seek and get closer to his sacred heart, the further these demons and egos are from our conscious thought. Jesus is the one who can reorder our passions and who will when we ask him. 
Through this process, we too rise facing the east, facing the rising sun. Because our Lord extended his hand and his loving mercy to help us out of our death, which is our bo- which our body brings. Mary has been reminding me over and over these last few weeks to get one very important truth out. That is the intent. Any act on our part is not inherently good or bad in the eyes of God. It is only the intent behind that action that makes it good or bad. I was struggling with the dilemma of disciplining my children. How could I correct a behavior that would lead a ch- uh, lead to the child either hurting themselves or destroying something? Or a behavior that caused someone else's, someone else harm, like when one kid is hitting another because of anger? How could I correct that in a loving way, but still get across the importance of not doing that act? My youngest has been a handful. Timeouts didn't work. Spankings didn't work. It was it only made things much worse and caused an emotional breakdown that always escalated the situation. Taking things away from him did not work. How could I help this child in a loving way? All these things seem like things I shouldn't be doing, especially the spanking part. But, you know, the, the taking something away was a personal. He took it personally. It was a personal hurt. He took it as an emotional, you know, an emotional strike, not like a physical strike, which can hurt just as bad. I didn't want to hurt the child and cause a sin on my part because of my treatment of him. Because at the same time, I cannot let him keep doing that action. I was kind of stuck. Until Mary taught me about intent. Every time I had been correcting my children, it was out of my anger in the moment, not out of my love for them. I would get angry first or annoyed. But most of the time, just angry. This was because of an ego or a demon. I was putting myself first. My intent was to correct the situation so that I could get back to me, me, me. Even though in my mind, after the fact, I could push it off as being a parent. The intent was still there and the action of correction. It was the intent that caused the action to fail. It was only when, through the grace of Mary's prayers for me and the help of our Lord, that I learned to see my intent in the moment. Jesus took the ego of anger and placed it away from me so I could come to the situation from love that I had for my children. My youngest still makes me struggle every day. In in fact, it was just literally five minutes ago. But he is a huge blessing for me. He gives me the opportunity to practice setting that ego of anger to the side with our Lord's help. I pray that I am also a blessing for him because so much of what I struggle with is in him as well. He is a true gift from God because together my son and I can become better examples of God's love in action. Boy, that was a sidetrack. However... What is important is that this ties into our gospel message. That is the intent behind following God's law. Jesus was following the law when he healed the man on Sabbath. In that time, not a single person would condemn a man for freeing an animal stuck in a fence because their intent was to help a defenseless creature of God. It was also an accepted thing to feed your animals on the Sabbath. And not considered work. But carrying a mat was considered work. This contrast between Jesus' loving act of healing and the elders and scribes' condemnation of the act puts the intent of the act into a blazingly clear light of divine truth. The intent behind the elders following the law was to boost their egos, to boast as to how holy they were. <clears throat> Yet, there were many people gathered around the well seeking miraculous healing, and they did not care for them, they as in the elders. Ezekiel was led out into the living waters of Jesus, flowing from the temple of God. He measured it four times at 1,000 cubits. The number four is the union of God with the human nature. 
1,000 is 10, which is wholeness, times 10, which is wholeness, times 10, which is wholeness. Three times the complete wholeness of each aspect of God's nature, counted four times. At the end, the living waters were so deep, Ezekiel could not stand but had to swim. This symbolized that he could not fully grasp in his mind the depths of God's love. He could only experience it by swimming in it and being a part of it. This love that flows from God through Jesus is the love that brings life into our lives. ADD moment, it's also what Eastern religions call piranha. Uh, anyway, life changes completely when your intent in love is to be a vessel that holds and gives that love to others. Pray for our mother's help in assisting you to see your intent in all actions. She has never once given up on me. And I can guarantee you she will joyfully and lovingly do the same for you. Um, on a side note, I've been starting to, there's, there's, uh, there's so much divine truth and wisdom as in Genesis. It's just amazing. Especially when you consider that everything in the Bible is some things are historical fact that they happened, as in the Gospels, you know, we, we know Jesus walked the earth, was resurrected. But even in his life, everything is a symbol, especially when it was recorded in the Bible. And almost everything in the Old Testament is full of symbolism. And that's especially true when you're talking about very early Bible, you know, Genesis and Exodus is that's how truths were conveyed from human to human from generation to generation was by these parables by these stories and the symbolism that was contained within it and learning to discern the meaning of the 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 symbolism and the images um allows you to learn the deep or learn some of the deeper truths that are hidden within the text but also allows you to learn some of the deeper meanings that God is trying to convey to you, especially when you're dreaming and especially when he wills that you remember a dream. Um, uh, yeah, I've, when you set your intent before you go to bed to remember the dreams, that's, that's you asking for God to, to speak to you. That's you asking for the Holy Spirit to speak to you in a state that, your body is shut down and it's just your mind that's active. So there's, there's less of this, uh, you know, living thing getting in the way of, you know, God's spirit communicating to you. Um, and I think uh, I was going to mention some of that yesterday, uh, which is, odd why why I brain farted it so hard <laughs> in the middle of talking. But uh the fact that the Tower of Babel the the core thread was, you know, I've I, I, I talked about it kind of before was divine truth, but the Tower of Babel didn't necessarily happen. Um it's more of a the symbolism of the original revelation of God um, being revealed to the people through symbolism and that core that 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 core language that they had was the language of love of God's love that that language of understanding and sharing God's love with each other and when they were building that tower to to the sky they were it, they, it was their egos, that negative part of themselves that was taking that love that God was placing in them to work through them and changing it into their own tower and making themselves into 
their god their ego was making themselves into a god and because of that god separated them and scattered them and he didn't necessarily scatter the language that they spoke but they he scattered the truth of love so they couldn't use it in a negative fashion anymore if that makes sense is that that truth of being able to because um you know we're in we're we're made in god and in, in, in the image of gods and god is a creator so we are made as mini creators we i mean you can see that with you know all the wonderful things that we make <laughs> you know, I, i'm surrounded by amazing things that humans make we're co-creators and the people of babylon were using their ability to create in a way that built themselves up and built their inner demons and they focused their attention from god back to themselves and used it all in negative ways we see that so often in our days um but you know divine divine will he's god is this is all in god's hands all of it even the the current situations in the world it's all in god's hands and you know what it's the separating the wheat from the chaff and separating the weeds from the fruit uh, you know this is this is all god's this is all in god's hands so i enjoy chatting i enjoy sharing god's light that shines out in into my heart with you guys and um like comment share subscribe uh if you got something out of it sorry i keep finding myself looking to the side if it's annoying you i can let me know i'll ch change it and figure out a different place for obs or i'll just hide obs altogether so i'm, I'm kind of learning with you um but um together our goal is to become saints see our lord in heaven and give that guy a big giant hug uh, that's my goal and i i, I think i think it's, it's probably a pretty good goal so i would like to bring a whole i'd like all of us to get together and and be saints together and not only not only be saints and when we when we die but you know let's 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 be saints first here on earth and, sh and and share some of that good the divine good the divine love in action with with our brothers and sisters and maybe through that we can we can change all of humanity you know it just start, starts with a couple of us so all right anyway <laughs> i started babbling so i'm gonna end it there i love you guys and i'll see you guys tomorrow